The sideline sorcerers are back right here, right now. And believe it or not, we're already over a quarter of the way through the NFL regular season. Kind of sad. I mean, it's been going along fast. It's been enjoyable. Weather's getting a little colder out here. And it just feels like we're getting into the heart of football season, which is always a good sign. And yeah, we're going to, of course, review what happened during week five and then preview week six, give you guys some good picks and caution you also because you never know what can happen. College and the pros, as we learned last week, just never know what can happen. Yeah, this was not our best week. I mean, it was bound to happen. We had you know a pretty good week the week before. And definitely came down to earth a little bit here, but Humbling we're going to forget about it. Yeah, Humbling I mean, week. you got to have a short memory with these things and just not let it affect you and move right along. So let's just dive right in, shall we? Week five assessment, Thursday night football. No one saw what happened last Thursday. Chicago walloped the commanders. They just did not seem like they were able to play. I thought Sam Howell was going to pick apart the Bears defense, and he kind of did. I mean, he did throw... For almost 400 yards, he had a couple touchdowns in there, but a costly interception, and obviously they just were not able to keep up with the Bears, DJ Moore. I mean, their defense is awful, could not cover DJ Moore to save their lives, and as, you know, Chicago Landers here, we're, you know, we're happy to see that. Like, that was, that was good. It was good to watch. Yeah, that was DJ, DJ Moore was the only receiver on the Bears with a a catch last week. That's wild. Yeah, I don't know. I think they, yeah, I mean, ultimately that will not sustain because defenses are going to figure out how to stop DJ Moore. They need to get Darnell Mooney involved. Obviously, Chase Claypool is gone now. What a clown. He's a Notre Dame guy, but I mean, he just lost. You know, he did not want to play in Chicago for whatever reason. He Mm -hmm. had no effort, just no attitude, no spirit whatsoever. So really upset about that whole thing. But now it's Darnell Mooney's time to get back into the game. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. It's weird that Claypool's now in the Dolphins, though. Because, yeah, I mean, like, does Tua need <laughs> any more weapons? No, he doesn't. <laughs> but I mean, if they can, you know, bolster that offense, why not? But honestly, I mean, he's probably more of a liability than he is an asset, at least right now. Looking at, it. I mean, he could ruin their little wide receiver room. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have like Braxton Berrios, who's been like filling in as their wide yeah. receiver three. It doesn't seem like, like they Braxton. need another one. Yeah, but we'll see what they could do with them. You got Jacksonville at Buffalo, the London game. Now, I said, I know, like, I had to pick Buffalo because Buffalo just, you know, routed the Dolphins, which is one of the best teams in the league. And Jacksonville has not looked great coming off losses to, you know, Houston and the Chiefs, in which they didn't even score a touchdown. But I knew, I mean, London is their superpower. You know, everyone's got to fly on over to them, get jet lagged. They're comfortable there. They're drinking their tea like we talked about. They like it over there. <laughs> they're, they're eating those scones, now. dude. That's what I'm saying. Now they got to come back to the States. They won't be back in London for another year. But, I mean, they took advantage. 2-0 and in London. They're, yeah. they're nice about it. Trevor Lawrence picked apart the Bills' defense. However, he fumbled twice. I mean, he's just got butter fingers. He really needs to work on that. And, yeah, I mean, the Bills just looked offensively a little bit spotty yeah i mean the bills defense had like three injuries on like that first yeah. drive in the first yeah, i mean that defense like that. is gonna be thin from here on out yeah it's not ideal <laughs> Matt for milano's out so that's gonna be tough for them i'm a little concerned but yeah i mean i don't know josh allen didn't play all i mean he played fine he had an interception but i mean he made stuff happen yeah Stephon he Diggs did okay. had a big game yeah he was all right but i realized that Jacksonville's connection to London is because their their coach like is very involved with like England or something like that. Like is they're like very he has close ties really? to England. Yeah, and Doug so, Peterson. Yeah, so that's why Jacksonville plays so many games in London each year, and that they're considering like moving there altogether. Because I know you mentioned that last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the market. I mean they've always been you know like the London team. Like if yeah. there was ever going to be like a London team, like it would be them. Like right. for whatever reason, it just started off that way. But yeah, good for them. Good for them. New Orleans at New England did not see this one coming at all. I mean, I think New England's probably one of the worst, if not the worst team in the league. They look so bad. Just an absolute shutout, bro. Yeah, I mean, Bill Belichick is just playing old school ball. Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, they're not the answer there at all. They have decent help. I mean, better than some teams, and they're just not doing anything. It's a real big mess right there. New Orleans looked great. Derek Carr finally had a pretty clean, good game. Two touchdowns, not a ton of yards. Probably should have one pick. But yeah, good 
you know, good for New Orleans. They just need to do this every week and not be so inconsistent. Yeah, I just don't know what happened to New England. Like last year, they had an offense that was really supportive of Ramondre. I mean, he had a breakout season last yeah. year, and he has just regressed fully. I yeah, mean, I, I mean, don't know what he's doing. Every everything's regressed there. They don't have like a number one receiver. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster yeah. is like barely. I think he still hasn't like eclipsed seventy yards told on the season. It's bad. I mean, yeah, it's like really Kendrick bad Bourne is like the number one receiver, and even yeah, he I mean, hasn't had like he's had have, one double digit point week. They have good touchdown or they have good tight ends too, like Mike yeah. Jacecki and Hunter Henry. Mm-hmm. Like they have decent players, decent offensive line, decent running backs. Just can't put anything together. That's just so strange for a coach like Belichick who's been yeah. doing it for so long. I mean, I'm telling you, Brady, it was a, it was like a 70-30 relationship. Like it was 70% because of Brady, 30 mm-hmm. because of Belichick. Might even be worse than that. Like it might be an A20. And Belichick for the first time might be in trouble. I mean, they probably are like, you won six Super Bowls. You could just stay here for as <laughs> right. long as you want until you die or whatever. But like still yeah. though, I mean, I don't know how you feel about that, Patriot fans, but you're in the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. Tennessee at Indianapolis. I just, I think you can never pick Tennessee on the road. You can only like, and this is even, you know, limited at times as well. Pick them at home because they go on the road. They're just not the same team. Offensively, they're just not very explosive. Tannehill's been disappointing me. Usually he eats up the Colts. He threw for a fair amount of yards, but had an interception. Was not productive really in any way, shape, or form. Anthony Richardson went out again just because of his style of play. It's so injury prone. But like I've been saying, Gardner Minshew is extremely competent. And yeah, went 11 for 14, like 104 yards, and brought him the victory there. So yeah, good for Indy. At least they're exciting this year. They're not as bad as everyone thought. And Gardner Minshew... It's a very fine option at quarterback. Like he really could be a starter. Like he is mm-hmm. better than a lot of the quarterbacks that are playing right now. Josh Dobbs, Daniel Jones, Mac Jones, etc. Yeah, for sure. And I, I gotta say, I was a little surprised at how well Tannehill performed offensively this time around. I mean, he got D hop the ball eight times. Yeah, yeah. D hop did finally have a big 140 game. 140 yards. I mean, they almost never run the offense through Tannehill. It's just always been run through Derrick Henry. Yeah, but there's no, they still didn't score, no passing touchdowns. He only has two passing touchdowns on the year. Yeah, or I think he might even still true. have like one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he just finally got some good yardage in there, though. I was impressed to see that. But I feel like Tennessee is one of the most bipolar teams out there. I never yeah. know when to pick them and when it's to like, not. It's like, yeah, it's one of those home away type things. Like, their yeah. home field advantage. Like, it's kind of similar to Atlanta. Like, it's mm-hmm. huge yeah. for both of those teams that aren't really good. Like, they're not very good, so they have to take advantage when they're at home. Because they right. go on the road, it's not. It's ugly. It's yeah. ugly. No, yeah, that makes sense. Baltimore at Pittsburgh, another wrong pick for me, but Baltimore just choked this game away. Lamar threw a pick on the goal line, and then he fumbled. So, I mean, Lamar, they had the game locked up, and then they just <laughs> away. Like, and Kenny Pickett just actually had a decent game, threw a you know big touchdown to George Pickens, made something happen there late. I mean, that is the oddest way. Let's just, let's just clarify. Yeah. To 17 points, Pittsburgh went. It was like field goal, safety, touchdown, missed two point conversion, field goal. Like it was just, it was <laughs> weird. I mean, yeah, and Baltimore, like Lamar Jackson, dude, like, oh my God, you can't be throwing goal line picks. You can't take points off the board mm-hmm. for your teammates or your team like that. You just right. can't do that. Yeah. I think just Lamar has historically really struggled yeah. facing oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yep. Sure. I just don't know what it is with him. Why can't he? I mean, their defense has always been pretty solid, and Mike Tomlin just yeah. knows what Lamar's tendencies are. Right. I think this is an absolute fluke, though. Pittsburgh is not very good of a team. No, I don't this think so. I mean, they're leading their division game. right now, but I don't think that'll hold. No, I, I just don't not. think offensively they're good enough. No, they are not. Carolina at Detroit. I really am happy for Detroit. I mean, they're playing like one of the best, like a top five team in the league right now. Mm -hmm. I know Carolina's like the worst team in the league, but they annihilated them. Bryce Young did throw three touchdown passes, but most of that's garbage time. Like Jerry Goff, four total touchdowns. I mean, the lead was, they were out to a big lead immediately. It never was a game. Sam Laporta is looking like another great tight end out of Iowa. So happy to see some success there for Detroit. Their lead in the NSV North continues to grow. I mean, mm-hmm. 
Green Bay lost, Minnesota lost, Bears won, but that was their first game. I mean, was it like they're like two, th- two and three, and then one th- and four and one and four? So Detroit, I think you're a lock to make the playoffs. 100%. Don't mess it up. Don't mess <laughs> yeah. it up. All right. I can't see any scenario when that happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think they're, I think they're gonna win like at least ten games. Yeah, for sure. They also covered that massive nine point spread that you we. Yeah, had the big spreads got covered. Week. Like Miami covered against yeah. the Giants, which was like a double digit. I think there was nothing else like that in the league. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I was a little worried about that. I mean, yeah, that was one I, of their I'm biggest scared spreads of like big years. spreads in in the pros. But yeah, that is just the crazy discrepancy between you know two teams that are mm-hmm. very very different. Yeah, they got the job done. Houston, Atlanta, gotta hang my hat on this one pretty hard. You know, I, I mean, C.J. Stroud and the Texans, they did make it a game. Like, it was a close game. They led halftime. I mean, it was a game-winning field goal. So, like, obviously it's not like it was a slam-dunk pick or anything like that. But Desmond Ritter, I called him up. I was like, dude, like, I picked you a win. You got to <laughs> stop playing like dog shit. I gave him a nice pep talk. And sure enough, he had his best game of his career. I mean, he threw for over 300 yards, like eight-something yards a clip. I mean, he had a good game couple touchdowns and yeah happy for him it's just cj didn't play bad it's just he couldn't get into the end zone that much i mean it was just Mm -hmm. one of those like low scoring games that yeah ultimately the atlanta home field advantage come through yet again yeah i know i know you picked atlanta and i will give you props for making that pick because that was a good one you keep talking about (laughs) desmond ritter at home doesn't lose Yep, he's 30 and 0. I saw the stat today. That is really between wild. the pros and college. That is crazy. Yeah. But like in all seriousness, I still think that Houston is the better team. Yeah, I mean it's very possible. Like they play on a neutral field, yeah. It's very possible Houston wins that game. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a crazy pick to pick Houston, but I'm glad that I got that one cuz I needed it. I needed it. That was <laughs> it was a rough week as it is, so I needed that one. Right. Giants at Miami, perhaps one of the locks, easiest ones of the week here. Mm-hmm. Giants just, again, are continuing to struggle. Daniel Jones get hurt. doesn't really matter, though. It's not like Tyrod Taylor's that much worse, especially with the tools and the weapons they have going right there. Tua did not play a great game, though. Let's just be clear. He threw two picks, both of which were not, not very pretty. I mean, they were pretty ugly. Mm-hmm. You got to stop. You got to clean that up. You throw two picks against most teams in the league, you're going to lose that game. I mean, you threw two picks against the Jets, you're probably losing that game, and you're going to play the Jets twice here. So he's got to clean it up. That being said, he still threw for over 10 yards a clip, which I was pretty surprised about. Had two touchdowns, was pretty accurate. So I mean, he takes out those two picks. It's a you know great, almost perfect game. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I mean, the Dolphins still... Just looked electric, even with his two picks. Yeah. Their no. offense is just insane. Yeah, I think Devin Achan or whatever, Achan, yeah. got hurt, though. He did so. get hurt. Mostert came in, and he got a tud. But they they also have Jeff Wilson Jr., who... Yeah, he's competent as well. Like, he was mm-hmm. really good on San Fran. Right. So. <laughs> and then even... Uh, I forget his first name, but his last name is Ahmed. Uh, oh, Salvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Salvin's not bad either. Yeah, dude, the Dolphins just have just weapons all around. Yeah, it's just all these cheap running backs. They're yeah. totally fine. Cincinnati at Arizona. Really happy about this one. Cincinnati's back. Joe Burrow is back. He looked much more spry than he has in the past, just you know, on his feet, wiggling around, moving around, looking good. Three touchdowns, one pick, over 300 yards. Obviously, Jamar Chase just annihilated this game, took it over. Arizona has nobody to match up with him. So they're never going to really have a game like this again. Like I highly doubt he comes close to those numbers in any game the remainder of the season. But, I mean, good for them. They got right. It was a little close there for a while, I think. But they ultimately pulled away, covered the spread easily. So happy about this one. Bro, the Bengals finally woke up. Like it took yeah. them I'm telling they always weeks. struggle early on. Like they start 0-2 like almost every year. <laughs> Dude, that's just insane to me. Evidently, they did not starve in the desert they nope. were able to to no, they went in there and they killed some birds dude i don't know how i'm still <laughs> a little surprised by that they just started too slow for for my liking yeah i know i hear you they, they're on the precipice of like this was one of the turning points in their season mm-hmm. are they gonna be all right or are they just gonna be ran off for the rest of the year right josh dobbs just turned the ball over like three times though that's that's not gonna help you cardinals <laughs> yeah no that's fair Philadelphia at the Rams here. This one I thought was an easy pick for me. 
just saying that the Rams are very limited defensively and offensively. I mean, they're they're solid. Like they're competent in both of those categories, but the Eagles are just that much better, and they're still not playing great. I think Jalen Hurts did have an interception here, but threw for over 300 yards, looked really good. Devonta Smith still not getting involved, though. Like he, I think, only had like one catch in this game, which is yeah, crazy. Six so it's yards. Like, yeah, exactly. So it's like they have, like, they're just waiting. It's like, all right, man, like, We'll let A.J. Brown take this game, but when we need every hand on deck, like, we still have a lot of weapons in the back door. Like, you know, so it's like, it's scary that they're not getting everyone involved and they're still winning. They're still like 5 0. I mean, Dallas Goddard finally got involved, but the last few games he wasn't. So it's just, they're really deep. And this was, yeah, I mean, at least Stafford didn't throw a pick, though. First game, Mm -hmm. didn't throw a pick. Yeah, that's true. I am a little surprised that. Philly took this game with ease, though. I think that they're not yeah. quite as good as like everyone makes it out to be. Like you have a great point that they are not spreading the ball around to all of their talent. Mm-hmm. But I still like. But that's the thing, though. They're not playing great, and they're still winning. And that's just that's a yeah. really good sign. Just imagine when they put it all together. That's true. Jalen doesn't turn the ball over. They get Devontae involved, and that could think, be scary. I think one of their best assets is like truly their o-line like their o-line just makes things happen because they protect Jalen and they give swift just right massive holes to run through yeah i mean is that kelsey brother should he be dane taylor swift should jason kelsey actually be (laughs) it's it's quite possible (laughs) taylor would probably like like that that little burly beard a little bit a little bit more to grab a little bit more to love you know (laughs) a little hot in here all right, all right, moving on to the Jets at Denver. This was a good pick on your part, but it was a close game until Russell fumbled the ball there. That was just ugly. It was really bad. Like, I just don't understand what's going on in Denver. I really thought this was like the turning point. The turning point was at the Bears game. A lot of momentum going into this game. They still just can't put it together. I don't understand it. It's ugly. You got Sean Pan yelling at Russell Wilson there after that fumble, and he's just walking away from Sean Pan. It's just it's bad all around. <laughs> but good for the Jets. I mean, it's not really like Zach Wilson did anything incredible. Garrett Wilson didn't really do anything incredible. It was mm-hmm. a defensive performance, and obviously the, the fumble return for the touchdown was huge there to clinch the game. Right. I will say that Jaleel is so talented, and he needs to play more for Denver. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, Javante Williams, he gets hurt. He's never available, and when yeah. he does play, he's not even that good. So And then <laughs> Samaje, like, I don't even think he's good either. Yeah. They need to just get Jaleel the ball, bro. I mean, Samaje's all right. I think he had like 73 yards receiving or something crazy like that. Yeah, but just, uh like, he just popped off oh, yeah. against I'm the glad, Bears, though. And... I, I started him in a couple of my leagues. You know, yeah. in fact, this was crazy, dude. I'm waiting all day. I'm waiting all day for... Them to put Javante Williams is out, so I could put him in my IR spot and then mm-hmm. pick up another running back to use. Yeah, and they just weren't doing it. I knew I was going golfing on Sunday, so it's like I I literally set an alarm for like three o'clock because it was like a three twenty five start because mm-hmm. I need I could not let this happen. I could could not play somebody like it's a zero, but I just got too frantic about it. I decided that I had like three tight ends. I had Dallas Goddard, Tyler Higby, and Hunter Henry. Mm-hmm. So I think I dropped Higby, picked up Julio. And then just slotted him in without waiting until he was put as out. And then, right. yeah, that worked out nicely. Yeah, that, so. that was a good play for sure. But he is out. They did finally put him as out. So Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the Broncos don't even need to play him at all, dude. They have no, way yeah. more talent elsewhere. Javante, was, he had so much hype like the last two seasons, I yeah. feel like. And then I mean, did he had nothing like a good rookie it. year, but then he has not been able to replicate that in right. any way, shape, or form. Yeah, not even close. Kansas City at Minnesota, just one of those like games that got swept under the rug. I mean, Patrick Mahomes played fine, Kirk Cousins played fine, but ultimately came up short, as they always tend to do, losing by one score, complete opposite of last year. Justin Jefferson gets hurt off for four games, I guess. Not ideal, but yeah, Minnesota, you got to start. I think it might be time for the rebuild ski. might be time for the rebuild ski. Trade mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins away, draft the quarterback, and just start anew. We're trading Kirk away now? Yeah, yeah. You got to trade Kirk. Kirk's going Why? after this year. His, his contract's up after this year. He's definitely gone. Okay. I guarantee you they do not extend Kirk Cousins. But, like, why, though? Like, he's, I think he's been playing, like, Yeah, no, I think decently. he's fine. Like, I think he's totally fine. But, like, it's just, it's not working, though. Like, they've never been able to get past that. Like, and they're paying them. They, where are they going? They're going to have to pay him a ton more money. 
They'd rather just draft somebody who's Mm -hmm. equivalent. Plus, there are so many good quarterbacks in this upcoming draft. I mean, they can get somebody like maybe even the second round or they could get Mm -hmm. someone like in the late first round. That could be their franchise quarterback and could end up being just as good, if not better than Kirk, right away for like a sliver of the cost. And then they could build around that and ultimately maybe make a run. So Kirk's got to go, though. I mean, I'm Mm -hmm. not saying he's playing badly. He's playing really well. I think he still leads like the NFL in touchdown passes, but he's just, it's just not working. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, they are like one and four now. So yeah, maybe I mean, it is time. I mean, for last year, I know they went like 11 and whatever it was, and but they lost immediately in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And the year before that, I mean, they just never have been able to get where, I mean, you need to be. Right. So how about Mahomes, though, dude? Because, I mean, I think that he is not having a very good season no, I, so far. I predicted he would have a regression year. I mean, you just can't dude. put up just godlike numbers every year. You, I cannot believe he's still the favorite to win MVP. I don't understand that at all. I would bet. I think, I honestly don't know. Like, usually by now, like, you could see, like, kind of the front runner. Like, Mm -hmm. the years that Aaron Rodgers won, he was the front runner right now, like, at this point in the season. I just can't really see anyone right now who's front running. I mean, you almost want to say Brock Purdy, but I just don't think he's the most valuable player on that team. Like, you could. You could put a lot of guys in that spot with all <laughs> right. those weapons. I like, not like I know we've talked about this before. Like you put Kenny Pickett there, he's not going to do as well as Brock Purdy. You put Dak Prescott there, maybe he doesn't even do as well as Brock Purdy is doing. But I just don't think as far as the definition of MVP goes, he is the most valuable mm-hmm. player on that team. I really don't even think Tua is. So it's really tough for me to discern who the MVP would be. Honestly, Patrick Mahomes does, I guess, kind of fit more with that because he doesn't really have the receivers right now. But Mm -hmm. for me, for him to be the favorite right now to win an MVP, like he's got the best odds. I don't I don't really understand that. Yeah, no, I like I think it's gotta be like Josh Allen. Like I think Josh Allen this could be his year to win mm -hmm. it. I hope he does. I mean I love Josh. But I remember I texted you, bro, like I was about to do my fantasy drafts before week one and I was like, How do you feel? I think I had like the eight pick and I was like, How do you feel about taking Kelsey in the first and Mahomes in the second? And you told me not to because that would be too much stock in the Chiefs mm-hmm. offense, and Mahomes was bound to have a down year. You called it, dude. dude I'm glad you remember one. that because I didn't even remember me telling you that. I've told you other did. people that. Yeah, you did tell me that. I remember some being like, well, his bad. Like, even if he doesn't play well, he's still like really good. Right. I'm like, but you, his value, the value is just not there. Like, yeah. you could wait. Like, dude, I love Jared Goff this year. Like, Jared mm-hmm. Goff is winning me games in fantasy because yeah. <laughs> he's putting up like three touchdowns a game on average. So, yeah, that's that's huge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Brock Purdy could get you across the finish line if he continues to play like this. So, yeah, yeah, that's why I just didn't like Mahomes this year. Right. All righty. Dallas at San Francisco. What a disappointing, yet again, primetime game. Like, all these primetime games just suck. Although this one should have been good. Thought it would have been, bro. I mean, yeah. I mean, just Dallas looked bad. Dak looked really bad. I went to sleep. So I unfortunately didn't get to indulge in seeing his last two interceptions. I did see the first one, though. Just not great. Not great from Dak. Brock Purdy just going nuts. I mean, he's pushing the ball down the field. He's not just taking the short check down. So I'm really happy for the guy. I mean, it's such a great story. George Kittle went nuts. Three receptions, three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Good for him, too. San Francisco just looks great. I mean, I think it's ultimately, it's going to be San Fran, Philadelphia when it comes down to the stretch here. Right. Yeah. Unless something drastic happens. Yeah. No, that's probably accurate. Maybe Buffalo could get on in there. Yeah, I'm just thinking we'll NFC, see. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh I don't think I don't like Buffalo anymore because of their injuries to the defensive side of the ball. That's a good point. But yeah, normally CMC like gets all the touchdown work. So it was a little wild to see Kittle yeah. toss three of them in there. Now CMC did have a touchdown, but yeah. he wasn't running for a ton. Like that right. Mason guy actually outpaced him in terms of yards yeah. per carry. No, that's wild. That's crazy. I know. So well. Oh, well, same with this one. Green Bay at Vegas. I was really surprised that Green Bay just came out flat. They had extra time to prepare. And Jordan Love, this is an easier opponent to go up against. Like Vegas, their defense is not all that. Even though they have not allowed a ton of points, like thinking on it, like they didn't, you know, they limited Pittsburgh pretty good. They limited the Broncos pretty good. And I forgot who else they played. Oh, Chargers. Oh, no, sorry. Green. Yeah, the Chargers. Yeah, they did play the Chargers, which they did limit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe their defense is not that bad, but like still Jordan Love, you gotta put bigger numbers. You got you can't throw three picks against the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo, he started off really good, 
Then he threw the pick, missed a lot of throws. Ended up, you know, just having a mediocre game, but won the game. I think, yeah, they missed two field goals, so this really should have been a bigger win for Vegas. I know they were like 50 yarders, but one of them got tipped, and the other one he just straight up like donked off the upright. It's kind of crazy, though. Like the kickers for each of these teams are brothers. It's kind of cool. Yeah. No, that's kinda awesome. Cool. But yeah, no, I mean, good pick for Vegas. I just, I'm really disappointed in Green Bay. I think they have a, a little bit of a coaching issue. Mm-hmm. I think they have a quarterback issue as well. Yeah, I agree with that. I do want to share with our listeners, though, about the bet that I made last night. Oh, go for it. This is all you. I have to. It's all you. So yesterday, I just like, I had this <laughs> vision, bro. Like yesterday afternoon, I'm just like working on some homework. I have this vision that Jacoby Myers is getting a nine-yard touchdown pass. That's absurd. <laughs> Dude, first touchdown of the game. And so I pull out my phone. I open up DraftKings. I had like 100 bucks left in the account. And I was like, should I throw it all on Jacoby to get this tug? I mean, that's bold. Dude, it was that's so bold, bold because I never <laughs> dabble in those first touchdown yeah, props. Yeah, I mean, they're Dude, so fickle. <laughs> they really are. It's just an absolute guessing game. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, I can't justify it. And I literally put my phone away, bro. I put it away. Damn. 15 minutes later, I come back to it. And I'm like, you know what? I got to do it. I should just go for it. And it cashes, bro. Jacoby That's Myers, insane, my first TUD, cashes for $1,200. That's awesome. I'm so happy for I know, you, dude. dude. That's I was, a huge win. I'm glad you cashed out. I was jumping for joy, dude. I was so pumped. I was like a, a little zebra scampering around my living room. A little gazelle action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was pumped. But that's the best that's, that's thing humongous. that best thing that happened yeah. in that game. It was I just mean, a gotta, boring game to watch. You gotta have some redeeming factor yeah. after a little bit of a tough week for both of us Agreed. in terms of betting. Yeah. That's awesome though. I yeah, mean thank I think you. Vegas got beat up with this one a little bit. Like <laughs> not saying that they're you know regretting the odds they put out there but mm-hmm. like i to know two people like i know someone else like i know that podcaster i was telling you about this yeah. if you guys know crane company one of them also cashed out a hundred dollar bet on this as well which mm-hmm. is just wild i mean <laughs> jacoby myers it's so random but ultimately yeah i'll take it yeah can't <laughs> complain about it. all right getting into our start and sit assessment here Russell Wilson's been really consistent and solid all year in terms of fantasy. Obviously, that's not translating to real life, but he puts up two touchdowns at least every game. The offense runs through him. Starring James Conner did not work out well, though. The Bengals shut him down, and I think he's injured now, which Mm -hmm. is awesome, sarcastically. And then Zach Moss, this literally screwed me. I want you guys to know that I put my money where my mouth is. Like I bet on all these teams, and I also sit and start who I say. I sat Zach Moss in lieu of Tutu Atwell, and it cost me the week in fantasy. So really upsetting, really upsetting, like truly, truly upsetting, because I actually had a chance to win with Devontae Adams last night, and he couldn't get it done either. So, yeah. Tough week, man. Just a tough week <sighs> all around. We're, yeah. we're going to redeem ourselves this week, though. Yeah. But yeah, to recap my start and sit, uh, I'd said to start Zay Flowers. Um, he did like okay i think he had 9.8 points in a half ppr league really not great like not even in double digits i think he did have like six or seven targets or something like that so like it was he dropped a couple yeah no yeah he did so it was like okay from him bad decision to sit trevor lawrence though he is home i mean it's not like he had an amazing game though let's be honest though like it it wouldn't have been bad to sit him like he threw for a ton of yards had a touchdown but he did have two fumbles yeah that's true so i would i would probably put a little yellow by that one that would be a yellow block for me all right (laughs) good stuff and then uh lastly sitting miles sanders dude that one was a lock just sit him every week bro you could could just count him out i think chuba hubbard and him are just like they're just two raccoons in the backfield man (laughs) dude we love a good raccoon though oh yeah all right, the best bets. I want to just like go over these quickly, but I also want to defend some of them. Obviously, Tennessee, just throw that one out the window. I don't know what I was thinking with them on the road there. Denver, I really do believe like they were set up to win this game, and they blew it. It really is upsetting to me. Like The whole Denver situation, Russell Wilson, Sean Payton, is inexplicable. I mean, that has just been a mess of an organization, a whole mess. Now, Washington State... See, all right, let's just set this up. I told you about this when I, you know, when we first met up today. Mm-hmm. There were like three major college quarterbacks 
who had not thrown their interceptions. Like maybe sure, like I don't know. I, I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe like Southern Illinois quarterback hadn't thrown their interception yet. But major quarterbacks, Brady Cook on Missouri, Sam Hartman at Notre Dame, and Cam Ward at Washington State. None of which had thrown their interceptions yet this year. They're weak whatever this is, week six of college football, their combined interceptions were seven. They threw a combined seven total picks, <laughs> Dude, losing just... them the game. So literally I bet on all of them, and they all lost. I mean, Cam Ward, if he doesn't throw two picks, they probably win this game. It was still close. I just can't believe UCL's defense is actually decent, but I just I can't get over this one. Really upsetting to me. Now, the one I was almost least confident in, cashed. North Carolina, eight and a half with Syracuse. They came off a bye. That's why I picked them. It actually went up to nine and a half, I think it was, and they blew them out. So I guess I'm happy with that. Missouri, Brady Cook threw a pick six with like 30 seconds to go as they were driving to try and win the game. So it, they went backwards, ended up not covering, even though they were up 22 to seven at one point. So really mad about that. Red River shootout here, Texas and Oklahoma. Obviously, it was a close game the whole way. Texas ended up losing. So, I mean, I just didn't really see that coming. I didn't think Quinn Ewers would turn the ball over a couple times. I didn't think Oklahoma's defense would stop them. Literally, listen to this. Mm -hmm. Texas gets down to Oklahoma's one-yard line. It's first and goal at the one. Yeah. First and goal, second goal, third and goal, fourth and goal. Don't get it at all. Can you believe that? Like, I just don't don't get that. Like, How does that happen? Yeah, Steve Sarkeesian's an offensive head coach, and he can't get one yard. I just... It's absurd to me. That's unbelievable. Colorado did win by three points against Arizona State. I don't know where I saw this at four points because ultimately it was like a three, two and a half point margin that they pushed on, but there's that. Kentucky, congratulations, Georgia. It was the first time all year that you actually covered your spread. So I just got unlucky with that one. Kentucky (laughs) didn't come out to play. Obviously, we know what happened to Notre Dame. Sam Hartman threw three interceptions, bad coaching, penalties, Screw them over. But, of course, the Cornhuskers on Friday pulled through for me. I actually won this game. I did. I really like this one, and so I'm glad that it actually cashed. Should have put the money line in there for that one because, yeah, they did end up winning that game. So, yeah, there you have it for me. Not a great week. Not a great week at all. It's all right, dude. I didn't have a good week either, and I feel confident we're going to pick it back up this week, though. I mean, I need it. I need yeah. it. <laughs> Recapping mine real fast, dude. Houston decides to get cold after their absolute rampage the last two weeks, yeah. so they can't pull off a victory. Against- I mean, I think that was a good decision, though. Like yeah. that's not misfounded. Like some of these, yeah. like like Tennessee, maybe. Like you could say, like, what were you thinking, Rhett? This one, though, like I understand what you were thinking. Mm-hmm. Arizona, again, they decide to cool off a little bit. The Bengals just are absolutely boiling mm-hmm. in the desert, dude. They are so hot. They were just on fire, and they just turned it into points. Yeah, both teams came in this game like right around the same level, and then they just went off in their separate directions. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. And then the last one was more of just a value bet, but obviously Dallas money line did not come anywhere close yeah, to Yeah, maybe it wasn't as good of a value. Like Maybe if they lost like right. 24-21, but... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh well. well. <laughs> oh, well, at least it wasn't a situation where like two of them hit and then the parlay didn't hit. At least yeah. just all three of them didn't hit. Right. All right, week six. Let's forget about all that crap. Denver at Kansas City. I was almost going to say Kentucky there because I had it on the brain. Thursday night football. Easy pick here. Yeah, it should be easy, especially since it's at Kansas City. Denver looks yeah. just dysfunctional. So I mean I'm gonna be I'm excited to watch Russell Wilson Patrick Mahomes though play so mm-hmm. at least that'll keep me intrigued. Baltimore at Tennessee City, Tennessee City. What am I thinking? <laughs> Tennessee, <laughs> holy crap! All right, I almost wanted to take Tennessee here because they tend to play up to their competition. Like they tend to play pretty good against Baltimore. They beat them in the playoffs in 2020. They beat them the next year. And obviously they did ultimately lose to Baltimore in the playoffs Mm -hmm. again. But I don't know. This is one of those ones where it's like, I'm going to take Baltimore, but Tennessee's at home. You just never know what they could do. And Baltimore looks just a little little off. Yeah, no, they do. I'm also going to take Baltimore. But, dude, I feel like every time you fade Tennessee is when they end up winning. And it's going to be like a 27 to like... 14 win like they're just gonna like blow them out and then yeah. when you bet on tennessee they get like three points i know that's why like you just gotta stay away from them almost. yes yeah. it's so. so hard to pick a, a winner for tennessee matchups dude yeah 
Carolina at Miami. This is your lock of the week if you're in a survivor pool. You have to pick Miami. Yeah. Carolina not going to do anything. Not a chance, dude. Nope. New Orleans at Houston. This is a tough one for me. I see you're taking Houston. You're still you're stuck in with Houston despite their stumble they're last at, week. They're at home now, though. I know they're at home now. I just New Orleans defense just looks a little bit suffocating. I think C.J. Stroud might struggle a little bit despite his great start mm-hmm. to his rookie year. I think he's going to struggle a little bit, so I'm going to take New Orleans. They build up some good momentum. Although, I always am concerned you have a big win on the road like they just had. They tend to fall. Like teams like that, they tend to fall yeah. back down there with a little bit. So, I like your pick. It's not that crazy. Thanks, dude. Yeah, after putting up 34 points last week, I just don't see New Orleans doing that again. Yeah, yeah, they definitely won't do that again. Washington at Atlanta. I'm going to take Washington here. I think, you know, with the extra time, the rest, they come off of a bad loss. They're pissed off going to Atlanta, and I'm actually picking Desmond Ritter to have his first home loss in the pros and college combined. This is, is a wild a one, one, dude. I know. It is quite bold. I'm also taking Washington. I just think that they're going to rebound. and. Yeah, I mean, they need this game. Yeah. They can't afford to lose three in a row. Or no. would that be four in a row now, something like that? I think, yeah, it would be four in a row because they started off 2-0, and and then they lost to Buffalo. They lost to Philadelphia. They lost to the Bears. Yeah, this would be their fourth mm-hmm. loss. So they need this one. Yeah, they do. Indianapolis at Jacksonville. I can't believe they're playing again already. I like Jacksonville here to sweep the Colts, kill them off for the year, and never see them until next year. Unless they somehow make the playoffs, which I don't see. No, dude, happening. that's not happening. Yeah, I just I like Jacksonville. I like where they're headed. They're on an upward trajectory. Coming back from London, though, it's a little a little precarious, but at least they're at home. So, And, yeah, I know Gardner Minshew's guys' revenge game here, which is the only factor that concerns me a little bit, mm-hmm. but I just don't think he's going to be able to do enough to get it done against Trevor Lawrence and the Jags. Yeah, I agree with that. I really am not all that high on Gardner Minshew. I know that like he's Come on, he's dude. He's the I man. Know, Minshew I know, madness. I know Minshew the mania. Minshew madness, yeah. But I really like picking the Colts when Richardson's playing. But now that he's hurt, I don't have a whole lot of faith in them. I'm telling you, Gardner Minshew gives them just as good, if not a better chance to win. Okay. I mean, he's the one to come out. That's come in and close out these games. He closed out against Tennessee. He closed out against the Ravens. Yeah. So that's all that's I'm saying. That's a good point. Seattle at Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati has found their stride. Seattle's defense isn't amazing. So I am taking Cincinnati here. I think they're finally going to you know just get up and going, and they're going to start rolling teams here. I think they're still a little undervalued, so I'd take them to cover, actually. Yeah, same Z's, dude. The Tigers are are hungry. They're going to go eat some birds again. Some more birds? Yeah, dude. Some watery birds this time? Yeah. Some seabirds? Yeah. <laughs> Minnesota at Chicago. I'm glad you're taking Chicago. I'm honestly surprised that you're not taking Minnesota here, but I just I like Chicago. Again, extra rest. They've built up some momentum. They got a lot going on offense, mm-hmm. and Minnesota is one of the worst defenses in the league. So, I mean, they're lucky, honestly. They've had three of the worst defenses in a row. Yeah. I think they'll be able to continue to have success in this game against Minnesota, and I just don't think her cousins, you know, with Justin Jefferson now not being able to run the ball, they're going to be able to outscore Chicago. I think this has a chance to be a good game, though. Like, I think this could be a pretty high-scoring one. Yeah, no, I I agree that it is definitely going to be high-scoring. And I mean, the Bears have put up like seventy points in the last two weeks combined. Yeah, I like and, the over in this game. Yeah, that's actually one of my best bets this oh, week. Oh, is it really? Let yeah. me guess. Let me guess. I bet the I bet it's at like fifty-two. No, oh, dude, 46 and a half. <gasps> oh, my God, dude. I love yeah. the over. I, I know, right? I love the over. <laughs> I man. know. Like, both teams, like, don't have the best defense. and they I can't both, believe that. Yeah, they've both been cooking on offense. So, 40, that, Let me uh, just ask you. Like, I know you've been doing that strategy with the over and under. So I like, actually did not check it. Oh, you didn't do it this dude, week? Dude, I, I oh, did not. Man. Yeah, I did not check it this week. And All I didn't right. check it for this Minnesota at Chicago game either, dude. Yeah, well, I we just, could take a look at it here, but. Yeah, I saw 46.5. I just, yeah, like, holy dude, cow. I mean, I, I see low. this as like a, a 34 31 type of ball game. Yeah. No, which will I, easily knock it over. I mean, I could see it even being more than that. So right. <laughs> I love that. San Francisco at Cleveland. Hold on, bro. I just, I just looked at this line, it moved down to 44.5. 
Does Vegas know something we don't Bro, all of a sudden? Like, what? Like, Minnesota is still going to be able to score. Like, KJ Osborne and Jordan Asson, they're fully competent. This is this is blowing my mind right now. All right, so it it says the line opened at 48 and a half, and 76% of the public bet the under. And, what? And it's now down to 44 and a half. I love the over here. Just slam the over. I mean, all yeah. you need is like like a 24 28 game like and not even that like but i mean both teams like have been scoring a lot of points i just don't understand it's at 44 right now 44 and a half so a 24 21 ball game knocks it knocks it over yeah i don't understand that but again whenever i think there's a lock with a bet like this <laughs> yeah vegas is always just sneaky right except for that seattle giants one that's one that still mm-hmm. scratches my head to this Day, but yeah, no, that's true. But if seventy six percent of the public is betting the under, I could see it like happening. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, you should bet the I'm over. I'm gonna toss here. some coin on that right now yeah. before that moves at all. Right. All right, San Fran at Cleveland. This feels a little trappy to me because Cleveland's at home. They're coming off of a bye. I think Deshaun will play, but he still probably won't be. I mean, he was medically clear to play in that last game, so he should be like a hundred percent. But they have a really good defense, and obviously, San Fran just had a big game. As we talked about, teams tend to fall back down to earth the week after. So this concerns me a bit, but I'm still going to take San Fran. Yeah, man, dude. San Fran is just unstoppable these days. I'm not concerned so. about, about Cleveland. Here. I could see them losing this game. Like They're not going to go like 15, 16-0, 17-0. Bro, I just don't see a team that can beat San Fran right now. Like I thought Dallas like would have been like one of the best matchups for them. And they yeah. just blew Dallas out of the water. One of the best defenses in the league. And they made them look like garbage. Yeah, dude. Made them look like high school. Yeah. High school varsity. <laughs> they did, bro. <laughs> New England at Vegas. This one also concerns me. I don't feel super confident in taking Vegas, but I do kind of like the Jimmy Garoppolo revenge game narrative here. Obviously, he was the backup on the Patriots, and they traded him away instead of you know, maybe making him like their long-term post-Brady solution. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I do like Vegas here. They're building up some momentum, and New England just looks so bad. But I, again, I never count Bill Belichick out, so this one does concern me a bit. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't count him out. But after last week, I mean, New England putting up zero, bro, that's like the Giants like putting up zero. Like I don't yeah. want to bet any faith on a team that I know that just can't doesn't score, score a, a single point. point right. Like that's unbelievable. Detroit at Tampa Bay, also a bit concerning because Tampa Bay is coming off the bye. Whenever a team comes off of a bye, it worries me a bit. I'm still going to take Detroit here. They're on the road. They're playing really good. Lots of momentum. Jared Goff just needs to limit the turnovers against a decent Tampa Bay defense. And I think I think Baker Mayfield could struggle in this game because of their offensive line issues. And Detroit's, you know, their defensive front's a little menacing. So I... Yeah. I think that's the key of the game. You just got to get after Baker Mayfield, make him uncomfortable, make him turn the ball over, Mm -hmm. and they should be able to win this game. Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, Do we think, is Mike Evans out or is he playing? I think he's still questionable. I would like, I think he would play. I don't know. I feel like Godwin is going to get a lot of action now, though. Like, regardless of whether or not Evans plays, I feel like. I like Godwin, dude. I almost like Kate Otten as like a tight end oh, yeah. option dude that like, would be not bad i think that would actually be a great start this week would be yeah God. yeah maybe i'll sneak that one in last minute yeah now i love arizona at the rams like if you're gonna bet on a game here like this is one you want to bet on the rams have always had the cardinals number sean McVay just feasts on the cardinals year in and year out and now facing one of their worst teams over the last few years i really really do like the rams here yeah, dude. Same here. I was already hot on the Rams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I picked them last week against Philly. I know they did not yeah. come in clutch with a win there, but I'm liking the Rams to win this week, dude. Cup is back. Cup, Cup is back. You look good. Didn't get a touchdown, but I think they have like a three-head monster at wide receiver. Dude, you know, you got Tutu dragon. and you got Puka. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to stop them. Yeah. You're I just like going to be able to slow them down. Yeah. Philadelphia at the Jets kind of a weird game here i like philadelphia obviously but i don't know i could see the jets keeping this close yeah i just think the jets have like that good a defense to keep them in most of these games obviously they struggle against dallas but kept them in against the chiefs right 
And Philadelphia, yeah, you know, I do like Philadelphia in this game. There's no question about it. They're going to win this game. I mean, yeah, they're going to win. I just, like, I feel like this could be one of those sneaky times where, like, a team that's, like, yeah. obviously worse, like, just, like, keeps them in. Like, almost when, like, Washington faced the Eagles. Like, right. That's a game that, like, everyone knows the Eagles are going to win that game, and yet Washington kept it so close all the yeah. way through. Yeah, their defense is a little concerning. Yeah. So that's the only thing I would say about this. Now, are you telling me that Giants at Buffalo is the Sunday night football game? <laughs> I am, bro. Are you absolutely <laughs> stroking me, dude? What the fuck? The Giants, Thursday night, San Francisco, Monday night against the Seahawks, and now another primetime game. Why does the NFL continue to put... One of the worst, if not the worst team in the league in prime time. What is I mean, this? Do they think the Giants were going to be good this year? I mean, I thought they were going to be okay, but like they're not worth three primetime games out of the first six weeks. It's absolutely not. I mean, Daniel Jones might not even play this game, and then they'd be oh even my worse. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Well, then, it's, then it becomes a Tyrod Taylor revenge game because, yeah. you know, he used to be on the Bills. Right. But, I mean, I guess I'll be, you know, excited to watch Josh Allen play, but this is disgusting. Like, this is. This is atrocious. The yeah. primetime selection has been really bad. Like sometimes you just got to take the worst brands, like the lower tier teams with less of a following just because it's going to be a better game. Right. Like, I mean, Cincinnati and Seattle, Minnesota, Chicago, Detroit and Tampa Bay, all those are better games than this. Yeah. This should be a blowout, dude. Like yeah. A big blowout. It really should. I could see like Josh tossing up like five touchdowns through the third quarter and then they just yank him yeah i mean he ain't playing this whole game yeah. <laughs> he's getting benched yeah i mean taken out not benched, benched right you know what i mean yeah another one that i don't really love i dallas at the chargers chargers coming off of a bye i like them here a lot they're not favored they're underdogs so i like the value there if you're worried to bet on them but you never know what dallas and their defense i just I think the Chargers' offense is really good. I mean, you got Keenan Allen. I know Mike Williams is out, but they drafted a receiver out of TCU, so they were able to fill that void. And Detroit or Dallas has not looked that great. I mean, they beat up on bad teams, struggled even against. I mean, they lost to the Cardinals, and they really struggled against the Niners. I don't see them win this game. I'm honestly surprised you picked them. I was going to say the same for you. I mean, Dallas is still a good team. I'm really right. concerned about their offense. They they could not run the ball against San Fran. I know San Fran's one of the best defenses, but Michael Gallup's got to step up. C.D. Lamb can't be the only guy catching balls there. I know they got that Jake Ferguson at tight end, but, I mean, it's Jake Ferguson. Now. Come <laughs> on now. And Chargers coming off of bye. They're at home. I know it's Brandon Staley, who I don't like, but I just I love the value here taking their money line. Right. I it, mean – Dallas is going to be angry after last week, bro. They got embarrassed against the 49ers. Like, that was just a horrible no, performance. No, I hear you. I hear you. Like, I, just... I think Dak's going to come back. He's not having a single interception in this game. <laughs> like, after throwing three picks. like He's going to get sacked a bunch, though. Yeah, but, got, I mean, he Nick, might. You got Joey Bosa. It's Joey Bosa. I always forget which one it is. But you got one of the yeah. Bosas. You got Khalil Mack. Mack's on the 49ers. And then here's this revenge game. Chargers lost to the Cowboys, I think, either last year or the year before. Oh, yeah. Well, that's true. It was a low-scoring game. It was, like, early in the season. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah, this is one of our only differences this it's week. got to come We're down to it, dude. Monday two? Night Football, it's actually not a bad game. Actually not a bad game, although I hate watching Dallas yeah. play back-to-back weeks. But mm-hmm. moving on to our start and sits. I'm going to start Chris Olave. I know he hasn't been super explosive. He only had like one reception for a touchdown or something like that. And obviously only like two receptions the week before, but I like him against Houston here. I think he's, he's been, been dealing with a slight injury. Has he really? I don't know like what it is, wow. but like I think he's been dealing with a little bit of something that's been diminishing his target share. That makes sense. Yeah. I like him to blow up in this game though. Like I think he's bound to just have a big game here eventually where Derek Carr just feeds him the ball. Yeah, I mean he is the top receiver on the Saints in my opinion. Like I think he's yeah. more talented than Michael Thomas oh, yeah. in his older age at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. And you know, I think that he is a great buy low candidate if you're looking for someone to target for a trade a in trade a fantasy scheme? league. Yeah. yeah. Cuz he's a very talented young receiver. I agree. I would also try and pick up KJ Osborne and start him maybe if it's like a 14-team league. 14-team league. Mm-hmm. 
You got Justin Jefferson out for four weeks. KJ becomes the number two receiver. He's very serviceable. Jordan Addison will be the guy, though, but I still like him here, so I would pick him up. Just uh, you know, have a little bit of depth in that position. I'm saying Brian Robinson and Rashad White. Don't like any running backs this week. I think Washington will struggle to run the ball against Atlanta. If they struggled to run the ball against the Bears, I think they will also struggle to run the ball against the Falcons. And Tampa Bay will absolutely struggle to run the ball against a Detroit defensive front that has been rock solid all year. Yeah, man. I I agree with that. And it's not like Rashad White's like a must start every week. Like he's very borderline, but mm-hmm. definitely sit him. Like, don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. All right, and then my starts kind of similar to you. I got Jordan Addison starting this yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, undeniable. Yeah, yeah undoubtedly. He, he's getting a lot of action yeah. this week against uh against the Bears. Second, we're starting Darren Waller. Um this might be a little bit of a questionable pick. Um, but I just don't know if I could trust him. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't really trust him, but I think that the giants are going to be playing from behind and I feel like he is the top receiving target in that offense. I feel like I don't like Wandale. I don't like the Juan Diddler, bro. I don't (laughs) like Darius Slayton. Like I would not be trusting them. Jalen Hyatt. No, dude. I don't Who even is that? I don't like those guys, bro. (laughs) I like, I think that. The Giants are going to have to pass the ball a lot this week against Buffalo. I mean, that's what you say every week. I mean, that's what they have to do every week, I mean, but they're yeah. just incapable of it. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. Like They only throw for like 150 yards a game, not even. I think that this could be Waller's sneaky week. I think this is the week Waller really sits down and is like, why did I come here? <laughs> like This was this, Maybe. this is not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm talented, but this is not good. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you, you could be right. I Yeah. This might this is probably my most questionable pick. But there's so many more teams out there that could use a solid tight end, like Dallas. Uh, let's see here. I mean, the Rams maybe a little bit. You got Tampa Bay. He's got Kate on. He's fine. The Saints mm-hmm. could use him. I mean, there's so many teams out there that could use this guy. Yeah, and he's just run away. Yeah, not not much that yeah. uh, he can do about we'll it. See. Unfortunately, I guess he could request a trade or something like that, but. I think he'll be he'll be content. I think yeah. he'll just be quiet about it for now. Yeah, I guess so. All right, and then my sits this week. I'm sitting both Jerome Ford and Brees Hall. Kind of similar to you, dude. We both sit in two running backs this week. But Not a big fan of the Brees Hall sit. I feel like no. after this game, he's kind of proven that you got you kind of got to start him every week. No, I mean he is a start every week, but dude, he's facing a Philadelphia defense that is not really, you know, allowing a lot of yardage to running backs. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I mean, Philly's got a really solid defensive front, and I just don't see Brees getting a lot of touches in this game. And again, I could see yeah. the Eagles going up here kind of early and just Zach Wilson being forced to air the ball out a little bit right. more. I do like Jerome Ford sitting, though, especially with Kareem Hunt also in that backfield. Yeah, and they're facing San Fran. Yeah. I mean, no one, no running backs get any action against San Fran. Dude. Yeah, Pollard got thing. absolutely whacked. Yeah. <laughs> That fumble was crazy that he had, though. <laughs> yeah. That ball literally did not want to go out of bounds. Like, it literally mm-hmm. hits, and it literally, like, turns right to stay yeah. in bounds. Like, it Dude, just, that was – oh, that's crazy. But, yeah, Pollard only tossed up 29 yards against them, which is just wild to me when he's such a talented young back. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. I mean, the Niners are just – they're vicious. They are. All right, getting into the best bets here for this upcoming week to close out the pod. <sighs> Tennessee plus three and a half. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why I'm doing this, but they're at home. They always match up pretty good against the Ravens in the past few years. So I'm going to take that minus 115, not to win just the three and a half point spread. What I'm going to take to win are the Chargers. I like them plus 115. I like the value there for sure. I mean, they're playing at home coming off of a bye. I almost don't see how you cannot take them. Seattle plus two and a half. Plus 100. I kind of like the value here. I think it will eventually, I think it will go a little bit up. Like I think it could end up going up to three. Cincinnati is still slightly unproven. Like, I mean, they had a great week against Arizona, mm-hmm. but that's a bad team. Seattle's much better than Arizona. So this one does worry a little, me a little bit. I like Joe Burrow, but if I'm the Bengals, I'm a little concerned playing Seattle. So I'm going to take 
the points there. And then I just have a slew of college bets here. I'm just, you know, this is one of those things. I'm just going to throw shit up against the wall and see what sticks. Florida International University. They play like Thursday, maybe Thursday or Friday against University of Texas, El Paso. Mm -hmm. Only minus two. I like them a lot. I like that one for them to cover that. Alabama minus 19 and a half playing Arkansas. Alabama has just been playing much better after that Texas loss in the South Florida game. So I like them here. Arkansas, they always kind of tend to keep it close, but I just, I don't think they're going to be able to against Alabama. I like Ohio State minus 19 and a half with Purdue a lot. I like this one a lot. I can't believe that it's almost the same spread that they had against Maryland. And Maryland's a far better team than Purdue. So I like Ohio State here to cover a lot. And then one of my favorites of the entire week is Oregon plus two and a half, which is minus 105, playing at Washington. It's at home for Washington, but Oregon's just a much more balanced team. So I would take them with the points. I would take them the money line. Like this is, you would lather the shit out of this. Take Oregon money line plus 118. Take Oregon plus two and a half. And then find some alternative spreads in there. Take Oregon minus two and a half as well. All of them could cash because I really do think Oregon's the better team against Washington here. Another one that I really like is Wyoming plus ten and a half with Air Force here. I just can't believe that they're ten and a half point favorites. They've played everyone hard, whether it be Texas Tech, whether it be Texas. They've had really good games. So I'm taking Wyoming in the points there. University of Alabama, Birmingham, they've played very good. They've Covered a lot of spreads recently against Georgia. I think they just played South Florida, blew them out. They scored 56 on South Florida when they were only favored by three. I mean, they literally won by like 20-some points, and they were only favored by three. So I like them here, nine-point underdogs against University of Texas, San Antonio. It's time for Georgia. Now, I know Georgia, like I said, they hadn't covered it all until just this past week against Kentucky. I think it's their time to start covering all these spreads. And same with Michigan, honestly, although I'm not going to take them this week. I like Georgia to cover the 31.5 point spread against Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's just not very good, as per usual. They're the, you know, just the black sheep of the SEC. So I like Georgia there. I like Duke. Three and a half coming off of a bye against NC State. I really don't understand this spread. I don't think NC State's very good at all. Duke's a much better team. They got that experience. I think Riley Leonard, I'm not sure where he's at with that ankle injury, but regardless, I like them to cover the spread. I also, you know, sticking with the ACC here, I like North Carolina. Again, I picked them a bunch this year and they've never let me down. North Carolina to cover the three and a half point spread against a Miami with a broken spirit after that coach just threw the game away. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Did you hear about this? No, I did not. Miami's up like 20. Oh, 2017. I did hear about this one. Yes. And so the coach, rather than taking a knee, he hands the ball off. Bro, what is he doing? It's so, it's dumb. It's idiotic. It's behavior of an imbecile. I just did not understand it. Like he even gave a post game interview about it that, like he it was doesn't make any sense speaking dude. pig latin bro like he was, <laughs> he was not making any sense yeah i mean i just i don't get it at all like it's a it's a head scratcher like when you can end the game like end the game like i know yeah. like in a video game like honestly i i feel tempted too to bolster my stats yeah but there's always some crazy shit that can happen that'll lose you the game right. and it actually happened here and the funny part is is that even when they fumbled the ball they still probably had like a 70, 90% chance to win the game. Yeah. Georgia Tech just had like two crazy pass plays mm-hmm. and a nice like almost Hail Mary to win. I mean, that's wild to me. So I like North Carolina to cover here. And then Cal at Utah, under 45 points, both good defenses, not a ton going on offense. So that's why I'm taking. I just want five, right? That's all I want. I know <laughs> these are like, you know, it's one or the other, but I just want five, all right? That's all I want. Fair enough. Bro, I think someone's got to check. Miami's coach's fan duel account because that <laughs> yeah no they need ta- his entire phone like his yeah. tax like where are you who are you emailing dude like what's going on there like yeah. Mario Cristobal <laughs> I just don't get it dude like it's it's so it's inexplicable bad. <laughs> like I just cannot it's almost like fireable like I just cannot imagine any coach ever in the NFL ever doing something so foolish what were they like four or five and oh? You're ranked. Yeah. You have the whole season in front of you, and then you lose to a bad Georgia Tech team. 
after you barely, I mean, you shouldn't even won the game as it was. Your quarterback threw like three or four picks. <laughs> right. I just don't get it, dude. Yeah, no, that one was ridiculous. And then uh, I, I do like the rest of your picks, except for Seattle plus two and a half. So like, this is yeah. Like I think a, I did even say earlier Cincinnati would cover that. So I don't yeah. know. I'm gonna leave it there though because you gotta sometimes trust your younger self and your younger thought process. Like this is just like a really interesting one to me though. Like Seattle, like if Seattle loses by three like they lose by a field goal which like i feel like is much more likely than them losing by two like it's hard to bet on a team to lose no, by know. one or two points no you know? i hear you yeah so you're that, almost taking them to win yeah exactly. but this is one of those picks that i like to do where it's like i really want cincinnati to win like i love cincinnati and the Niners. like as so you you know, tom brady's upset. out of the league yeah the bears suck so i like the Niners and the Bengals. the Bengals particularly and just like what happened, you know, I bet on Ohio State, I bet on Duke against Notre Dame. Right. Both situations, I ended up happy. However, you know what I didn't do? I bet on Notre Dame against Louisville. Bro. Because <laughs> I thought Louisville. So we can blame you for the loss. It's it's my fault, dude. I didn't bet on Louisville. But this week, I bet on USC. So no matter what happens, I'll be happy <laughs> at the end of that game in, in some capacity. Good stuff. All right, uh, on to my best bets for the week. So I'm taking the Bears' money line. I really think that they are going to stay hot after what they've been doing the last Mm -hmm. two weeks. Taking them at, uh, they're the underdogs at home against the Vikings, plus 132. Yeah, I like that a lot. Then we are taking the over in that game. This makes me giddy, dude. I love this (laughs) one so much. Yeah, over 46.5, but... That's what it was this morning when I wrote it up on the dock. Over 44.5. Maybe it'll keep moving down. I'm going to investigate that as soon as we hit stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a wild one to me. Um, and then uh, I guess you kind of disagree with this last one here, but Dallas money line at minus wow. 136. Look at us. We both got opposing money lines yeah. here. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> Parlaying those, though, plus 574. And then my last one, though, is TJ Hawkinson anytime TD. So, like, they haven't released the player prop odds yet on this yeah. game. But I, like, with Justin Jefferson out, I think he is going to be, like, one of the main oh, yeah. red no, zone targets. yeah, that's actually targets. a really good point. That's, like, this is probably going to be, like, plus, like, 200 odds or so. Oh, and, like, dude, I love that. I love that. I yeah. really do. So, like, Vegas, like, with plus 200 odds, Vegas is saying that's, like, a 33% chance of it hitting. I would give this, like, a 50% chance of hitting, though. So, like, yeah, I, like, it's good value. Yeah, I, like... TJ to get a tud this week. Yeah, against a bad Bears defense. Right. That's I mean, almost a lock in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. Yeah. So I think there will be a lot of touchdowns scored. Good stuff. Well, that's all we got for you guys. We threw a lot at you there, especially me. But you know I love college football. Maybe I'll do a little short on it like you do. I need to get into that. But to be honest with you guys, I've been feeling like poop over the last couple of weeks. I finally feel good now. So hopefully I can record some more content for the sideline sorcerers yeah dude i'm excited to see it yeah and i will mention that in my short this week i think we're going to have a little bit of a surprise we can't really share what it is but it's gonna be quite magical dude i am so excited yeah it's gonna be a good one i don't know it'll guarantee a win on the parlay (laughs) you'll know it when you see it (laughs) it might happen this week might happen next week yeah one of the two it's happening so either way get ready get ready yeah All right, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya.